Hey everyone, welcome back to Netcode Up channel. I am Frederick and I'm happy to have you here today. In this video, we are going to talk about how to consume default authentication web API in .NET 8 Blazor WebAssembly project. Before we jump into it, make sure you have subscribed to the channel and also hit on that notification bell so you never miss out any of our upcoming content. Also, if you enjoy what you're going to see today, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. I do offer training session or coaching session for those who are interested in Blazor, that is Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor server application, and also um, Web API, .NET, Mari, .NET, Mari, Blazor hybrid technologies. So if you're interested in, you can write me through a mail specified in the video description. The next question is, what are the objectives of this video? After you watching this video, you'll be able to 1. Configure WebAssembly co-hosted projects in .NET 8 Blazor. 2. You'll be able to create authentication endpoint in .NET 8 Web API. And the last one here is you'll be able to consume the authentication API endpoint in the Blazor WebAssembly project created. The source code of this project will be available on, on GitHub and I'll leave the link in the video description. Let's have a look with the output of what you're going to do today. So you can see from here that I have this login, this button here, and uh, not, nothing again. If I right click on this um, inspect element, I can just go to the developer tools. And in here, let's click on, I'm going to click on this application. You can see from here, I have a key and value. That's the local storage, nothing happens here. But let's go in there and I'm trying to register this. I specify the credentials and click on login. And now let's see. So we're going to have access to our local storage items here. You see we have authentication. We have a token. Now what we're going to do here with um, the default endpoint in .NET 8 Web API has refresh token capability and also the access token capability. We're going to have a look today on the access token and that is the authentication system. Now we're not going to do the refresh token. Maybe I believe after watching this you can implement that yourself. But if you think uh, I have to do that, you put it at the comment section and I'll make a separate video to top this video up on uh, that refresh token system. All right, so let's see, I have this token over here and if I click on this, you can see we have a refresh token, you can see we have our own token. This token is, or this, these tokens, they are generated by the, the auto endpoint created by Microsoft. As soon as you create a web API, you have that in there. All we now need to do here is just configure it and boom, we are done. So now we are consuming this inside our Blazor WebAssembly project. If I click on logout, you can see it is off now. Now this is the endpoint. So let me open a new tab, localhost. Then I'm going to type in the swagger. So that is the endpoint. And we did not create this endpoint. It has been created already by Microsoft. What we did was to configure it. And as you can see, it has shown on the screen. <laughs> Very simple one. Okay, so we have this register. We have login. We have refresh token. And you can see we have manage info, get info, etc. We're going to focus on the register and on the login. As I said earlier on, with the refresh token system, if one has to have a look with that, let me know. And I'll have a video done on that. Okay, let's start with our projects and... We're first going to create a solution, a blank solution. Then we're going to add our API, our Blazor WebAssembly, and our C# class library. So let's get this done. So let me close this. Let's create a new project. And I'm going to search for just solution. And that is the name here, blazer.net8. Let me add demo to it. So this is a demo. Click on create. So after creating this solution, we are going to add the three projects. Let's first add the blazer itself. So let's add new project. Then we choose blazer WebAssembly standalone. And here we give it a name. So this is a blazer WebAssembly. So Blazor WebAssembly app, 
and make sure the framework here it is 8.0 let's click click on create so this is created when you check the solution it is over here let's add the next project to the solution and that's going to be the api so you can click on this filter now choose this web api last one and asp.net call web api so in here we're going to say this is web api now click on next and make sure you choose the same 8.0 then click on create And the last one that we need to add is a C-sharp class library. So right click on the same solution and now let's add the next project. And this is going to be C-sharp class library. If I'm not finding that, click on this and go for library. And it's over here as a library C-sharp. So click on this. Let's give it a name as shared library. All right. So we have this. Click on next and the same framework 8.0. Create it. So we have those projects created. Now let's have a look, go to solution. And because we have them here. So these are the project, the API is over here. The library is over here. And now there's an app for the Blazor WebAssembly. Now let's link them. So you know for the normal Blazor WebAssembly project for co-hosted, it has access to the, um, the shared library. And now the API has access to the shared library and now the, this, uh, the, the app as well. So let's add them right click on the api dependencies add project references and now in here we choose the two that is a blazer app and now the class library and now let's open the class library it's not going to add anyone okay so we're going to add the blazer app and i'm going to link it to the c sharp library so right click on the dependencies add projects now choose only take note only the shell library click on ok and now we are done. Now let's make some cleanup. Okay, because we have the default class over here. We don't need them. So let's clean only this. The C sharp class. So there's a library because we had a class one. You have to remove that. Okay. Now we are done. Okay. So the normal C sharp library uh, project uh, that is for the uh, Blazor WebAssembly. You can see we normally set the API as a startup project. So as a startup project. Now as soon as this set as a startup, you try to run this. Instead of launching the Blazor app, it's going to launch this API. Let's have a look. This set as a startup. Click on this run. And now let's see what happened. So you can see that instead of running the, the web assembly, it is running this API. That is the reason why we need to configure them so it can run the Blazor app instead of running the API. Now let's have a look. In order to do that, we have to first tackle. So let's close this. We have to first tackle the API by installing a package known as Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.Component.WebAssembly.Server. Okay. So let's install that package to the API. Now let's go to solution. We right click on this API dependencies folder. And now go to manage NuGet packages. And now in here, we're going to install that package here. So go to the browse tab. And now in here, we're going to type in microsoft.asp.netcore.component. So I'm going to start from component.webassembly.server. Let's get it here. So our length, there is the second one. So let's install this to the latest version here is 8.0. Click on install apply and now accept it so i learned that is all so if you click on update maybe you can decide to update you know the packages here but for now this is the only package that we need to install to make this configuration work okay so you can actually update this to the the stable version let's update that as well okay so after doing this the next thing is to go to solution now go to the same web API, program.cs file. And now in here, you're going to add some few settings in here to make this work. So first, be, before uh, yeah, before the app.build, we need to add builder.services.add controller with views. So builder.services. 
so dot add controller with views this is what we need to add and also let's add razor pages so builder dot services dot add razor pages okay so you have the razor pages here let's this is a razor pages let's add them okay come to where we have the pipeline and after the app use trigger ui let's add this pipeline dot use web assembly um, debugging so web assembly this and now after the use http redirections here we need to add the same pipeline so app dot use then here we're going for blazor framework files so we have to include this and also we have to um we have map controllers so we have to do that so app dot map controllers let's also register this pipeline and so we have the controllers even here already and let's have app dot map fallback so fallback to file let's use this one and now uh, in this file what is the file name that's an index.html okay so index all right after doing this there's only one thing left so let's close this save that and let's go to the controller that's the properties folder line settings and in here you want to change this this route right so you see it is launching from the swagger you want to launch through the application that's a blazer app so we are going to replace this that is a launch url you're going to replace it with this and let's replace all and let's have a look with the last one here so if you are asking yourself where you're going to find this is when you create any .NET 7 um is it web api projects you're going to have no that's a blazer web assembly project for the .NET core hosted you're going to have access to this inspect uri you can just go in there and then copy it and then paste it here okay now um let's save this and let's build the application so we can run it and see if it's going to run the swagger or it's going to run the the blazer app so right click let's build the solution so built as seeded now let's run it again and see the outcome okay so you can see it is now ready but it seems like some of the files are not loaded correctly we have the app blazer app um, loaded in here we're not having the, the nice lookup as we know let's check it and see so when you check the program.cs that's for the server after this blazor framework files let's add up the static file so you can just get the the files or the service from this in index.html so app.use static files so use static files okay now i believe the problem is solved now so let's try to reload this project all right so now at the app is loading now let's see okay so we have it set now we've been able to configure our the blazer assembly core hosted project now the next one here is to let's talk about how to create the default authentication endpoint in the api so by doing this too we need to install some packages and you know since you're going to have access to database you have to install our ef core our sql server and um the tools right package so let's install that yeah now let's go to the solution right click on the same web api dependencies and i'll add get packages so click on the browse tab and now in here we need to install nt framework core So this is the framework core. We installed this 8.0 as you can see. Install that. We have to install tools and the SQL. So accept this. 
And as we have this the tool, so also install the tools. And after that, you have to install um, the ASP.NET Core Identity uh, Framework Core. Okay, so this also apply that, accept it. Okay, now now this has been installed. We go to this and microsoft.asp.netcore.identity.nt framework core we have to install this package too so apply accept it and we go to this SQL server so let's install the SQL server so the last package here is for us to be able to have an authentication system to add the token to our header to test this in the API or the swagger let's have install let's install this package and that is a swash backcode.aspnetcore.filters okay so let's have aspnetcore.filters so let's search for that and that is this one so install this package too this is for testing purpose right so install So after successfully installing these packages, let's go to the solution and we are still working in the API. So make sure you have that solution opened. The next one is let's let's close this the web app. Okay, that's for the Blazor. Right click on solution. It is solution. That's a web API. Let's add the folder known as data. And now in here we need to add our AppDB contest class. That's going to be a contest class. So you can give it any name that you want. But I'll say this is a contest class. And now within that contest class, we are going to use this identity DB contest. So and just replace this with this one. So you see we are hurting from this identity DB contest. And now this is a normal one that we used to know. Okay. Now after doing this we are not creating any model all the models is coming from this that from the app user so we have the model from this identity db contest what you need to do here is to register this or create a connection string in the app setting.json so click on this app setting.json and now in that we need to specify our database connection string in there now the connection string here is going to have a simple one So on top here, we can just have something like this. And the name here, it is a default connection that we are using. The server is a local host. And now this is the, the identity DB. Okay, so I have that database already. So let me make it identity DB. And we also add it to make the connection work. Okay, so we have this set. Let's save that. And the next thing to do is we have to register the connection string in the program.cs file so in here let's make this connection string registered and let's go to the program so before the build in here let's have this so take note we have this builder.services dot add controllers then we have builder.services dot add db contest and you have add con app db content that's a class that we created we use an sql server and now you specify a connection string name aside from that we need to add the settings for the authentication and you know this is the default one so we are making the configuration we have to register the service for authentication and I add the api endpoint which is inheriting from this identity db identity user okay for the model okay and we have a add framework store for this the contest class that we created in here which contains our configuration settings and the database name and etc okay now start from that let's specify the filter so you know you want the swagger to be able to accept a token so in doing that you have to specify the passing some parameters to the swagger gen we have the swagger gen here already so we can remove this and we are specifying some settings in here so we want to um, accept 
um, uh, authorization. So we're going to have a session known as authorization, and the type is going to be an API key. Yeah, so that is what it's going to do. Okay, so we have to specify this. Now, start from this, let's map the identity API. And we can do that down here where we have this pipeline configuration. So let's say it is an app.map. So map identity API. And now in here, we're specifying the identity um, user. So identity user. And that is a default one. So here we are not doing, we are not customizing this. Okay, so this is a default one. We have to map it as you've seen here. Okay, now after doing this, the next thing to do here is we're going to build this project and now perform database migration. I think all set. So let's save everything and build this project. All right, so this is now built successfully. What we're going to do next is yes, to perform database migration. So we have to choose, you know, the API is set as a default startup project already. Click on the package manager console. And now in here, make sure you choose the API set. And let's have add migration. So add as migration. Give it a name as first, as usual. That's what I normally use. But you can change it to any name that you want. Now this is going to build this application. We're going to build this project. Then after that, we're going to perform database migration. Now this is going to create a migration file where we're going to have access to all the tables and the columns in that. Yes, and that's what we have here. Okay. It is coming from the identity class, the identity DB contest class that we inherited from. Okay, now let's update the database table. So update database. Now let's wait. This is going to run or put the class here into an actual thing. It's going to make it uh, created as a table and the following column names. But you see, we have no matter all the time we have this, we can just shut this down, go to the project solution, and now where we have this API, click on it, and our project settings set this to false invariant globalization. Set this to false, and it's going to close this. So let's see. Now let's go back, go back again here and let's try to have the same update database. Now let's see if it's going to pop up or not. All right, so you can see we have it done. It's been created. Okay, so what we're going to do here is let's try to run this application and navigate to the, the Swagger and see if you're going to have access to the endpoint. All right, so let's navigate to the endpoint and see if it's working. Now, slash, you can specify in Swagger. Now, let's see if we're going to have access to the endpoint. And this is going to give us all the APIs here. So, you can see you have all the API, and that is a filter that we did. You can see we have this. And, and we can make a configuration by clicking on this and now specify our bearer token over here. So default, you can just try this by creating an application. It's an application, creating an account, right? Now let's try this out. And now the email, so let's say admin at one, two, three. Oh, so let's say this is the gmail.com. And now the password here it is an admin at one, two, three. So admin at one, two, three. Let's just copy only this one for the login. Click on this. Let's register. Let's see if this is going to create an account for us. So let's check. All right. So see we have the status code of 200, meaning everything is working. Now let's log in and see if we're going to have access to the token and the refresh token as well. So I'll try this out and now in here where we have the password and the email, we have to copy that to paste our new one and now let's execute it and see what we're going to have. Yeah. So you have a token, the type here is a bearer. We have access token, this is the expiry time and that is a refresh token. Okay. So now we're going to create an, a Blazor client to consume this API. So here too, we've achieved the second objective. 
that is creating or configuring the API endpoint. The last one is how to um, consume this API in the Blazor app. Let's have a look with that too. So let's close this application. And now we can just close these tabs. So I need to check the solution explorer. We now have this API. So we are done with that. We can close this API. And now let's go to the shared library. That's where we're going to have all our um, models in. So let's create a folder in the shared uh, projects and let's name this as models. That's where we're going to organize all our models for the consumption. Now let's Okay, so let me add S, let me make it as models. Now let's create our login model. So add a class and this is login user. And let's have another class as register user. So this is register user. Let's have a login response. So there's login response. Now this login response will return the token. This will return the token. Okay, so login um, response, click on add. Now let's field the map. So in the login user, we need to have just two properties so log login user we can just make this as a record and now let's go to the login so let's have a look here because see we have the email and the password that is what the the endpoint needs email and password that's all when we go to register it also needs the same email and password so that is the default one right so we have it set let's copy these and you can just put them here Now, after doing this, the response we want to have access to maybe the login response, uh, token, and now the token type. Okay. For now, we can have access to the refresh token, but we are not adding a refresh token today. We are not doing that today. If you want me to do that, you can let me know. But let's have a look on the token type and now the, the access token. That is what we want to have access to. But we can retrieve, we can retrieve everything after um, user logs in. And let's let's get it okay so we have the token type we have access token you see we have a refresh token and that's a login response okay so these are the models that we would need now we also need one thing um to make it store in the local storage because you're going to use local storage to cache or to store the token and everything in the local storage of the browser so maybe we don't want to use this login response. You want to use another model. And let's have a look. This is the authentication model. So let's make this specific to the class here. That's a project. Okay, we don't want to put it here because if a model is within the shared project, it can be used in the API. This class that we're going to create here it is limited to the client. So let's have a folder created. Let's name this as authentication. And let's create a model here as authentication model. So authentication model. And in that we want to have access to. Let's store the Okay, let me clear this. Let's store the token, the refresh token, and now the username. So let's clean up. Okay. After doing this, in order for us to use the Blazor local storage and also the authentication state provider, we have to install the packages. So let's install them. Right click on the client server dependencies 
and I'll add NuGet package or manage NuGet packages. So I'll click on the Browse tab, and now you can now search for Blazor Local Storage by Crescenti. So let's wait for this search, then we install that package. After this, we need to install microsoft.aspnetcore.components.authorization. So I just have to type in component.authorization. So that is this one. Let's install this as well. And the version here it is a 8.0. Take note. All right, so we are set. So we're going to create, the next one is to create our authentication state provider, and this is going to be the custom one. So let's go to the same folder, authentication folder. Let's add a class. The name of this class is going to be custom authentication state provider. Click on OK. Now this class is going to inherit from this authentication state provider class. And you can see it is coming out from the component that we installed. Right click on this. And we can just implement the abstract class that is a get authentication state async. Now we create an anonymous principal that's going to be the default one in case everything or user is not registered. This is what you want to display as anonymous. You see, we are passing the claim identity as empty. Then let's inject our iLocal storage so we can retrieve the data from the local storage. All right, so let's put it, let's generate constructor for this. So you can just type CTOR, type in that, click on enter, and I have it here. So let's pass in, let's inject this. It's because we've injected this one over here, it means we have to register this in the program.cs file, right? So control period, let's do that. So here, let's create an assigned field. So we have this set. Okay. Now, let's try to get the data from the authentication state provider. So we are going to get the user credentials from the API, not the API, the local storage, right? So before we do that, I want us to have some separate method in here, and that is what you're going to be using. So down here, we are going to recreate a claims principle. So set claims, we're going to accept the email because here the claim, we have only one claim, and that's going to be the email because during the registration, we have to send only our email. So that's going to be the claim, right? So there's no row in this. It is only the authentication system. So we have our email over here. That's going to be our username. So we create a new claim principal. Then it has a parameter known as a claim identity, which contains a list of claim. So here we are passing only one claim, and that's a claim type of what? Name. Maybe I can just put this in a normal format so you can see everything. So in here, let's see what this is what I can do. Let me put this here. Okay. I think this is what I can do. Okay, so we have this control KD. So this are we have only one claim here. And now this here we are visualizing this. You know, it is the output of the endpoint is gonna be serialized. So we have to visualize it. And in order for us to set this into the local storage, you know, we are going to set a model. And in order to convert model or to set save model into local storage, local storage does not accept objects. So we need to visualize it and now form it as a string. So that is what we're going to use this to do. So we're going to form it as a string with this because we are returning a string. We're taking the model here, then we visualize it. And now here, as soon as we accept the model, we want to now reconvert it. So it's a conversion and now what? Reconversion. So we convert it to realize as a string. Then I reconvert from a string to object. So that's what these two methods are doing here. So we're visualizing it over here. We're passing the object or the model. And now here, the model is the payload. And now we're passing the model here. We visualize it. And now we're going to return a string. So here, we're going to re receive the string, visualize it, and now return the model. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, three method here. Now, in for this get authentication state, 
we have to have a method so we can retrieve the data from the local storage and now check if we have credentials stored in there. So this is what we're going to use. We are saying that authentication, let's make this as async. Okay. So we say local storage dot get item. That is the name that you're giving for local storage. And I will check if it is now, then return anonymous. It means user is not registered or logged in. If it is not, then return authentication state, set the claim here. And now this claim needs what an email. But this email is not an encrypted one. So it must be the normal one. So here we have to visualize this authentication model. And now we have access to it type as name. Here, the local storage section is going to come out as what? as a serialized object so in order to pass the email we have to serialize it over here and now extract the name property and then pass on to this set claim method and that is this set claim method and this is returning just a claim principal so at the end we're going to have a uh, claim principal in here now um so this what this is going to check so here it is just retrieving the the token from the local storage how do we set the token Let's have this method to set the token or to remove the token when the user tries to log out. Now you put it here. We have this tax update authentication state and it is accepting an authentication model. Now this model comprises of when it, if I let me pick this here, so pick the definition and we say tag this token, refresh token, and the username. So if this is null, then we want to remove the it means that user has now logged out. As soon as user logs out, you want to call this method and pass in null here. As soon as this is null, it's going to remove this from the local storage and now set the claim principal to anonymous and it's going to call this um, notify authentication state change and to re-render the application and now remove the user or hide all the settings for the authentication system. Okay, so that's what we are doing now. If it is not null, then this is what we are doing. We're going to also set a claim principal and you can see we have an instance here so we call this claim principal passing the username and here the username it is the email address and now we're going to set this local storage so this is the, the one coming in here authentication model it is just a raw model and now before we set to local storage you have to serialize it so we serialize it then we set it to local storage so this method is going to set the token to local storage and now this method is going to retrieve the token from local storage. All right. And each is checking. And now I'm calling this notify authentication state change to get the user account um, change or get the app re render. Okay. So we have this set in here. Now the next thing to do is we have to register this um, custom authentication state in the program. So go to solution and inside the same client section the program.cs file we have to register them here so in here we register them we first have to add this authorization call then we add scope authentication state provider then provide our custom authentication state provider class that we created aside from that we need to also add a blazer local storage so let's also add it Okay, now let's create our component as a login and now the, the register component. Okay, so we can do that. Let's go to solution. So you can see we have this page and let's create this login component here. So what I'm going to do here is I have this, I'm going to just paste this login component. Now this login page this is what it has. The route here is login. And we see we are injecting this authentication state provider on top. We inject this navigation um, manager and this HTTP client over here. So control period. Let's include the references. Okay. Now, um, what is what doing? This is just an edit form that we are creating. It has this login user and there's a method when it is being invoked or called. Now we have this to display if there's any message for an error sick. And we have we are buying this as email then we bind this as a sort password we have a button known as login and the type here is submit now if we check this we have this login user so let's inject this model that's login user when this button is clicked 
we set the message initial to empty. We check, we make a post HTTP client to a post as JSync. The route here is login. When you check the route, the API, the swagger, we have a login. So we, there's a route over here. Then we specify our model. This login comprises of or contains only the email and the password. Now we check if it is not successful, then we can return this. But in case it is successful, then you want to read the content right here in the form of the login response. Remember that login response comprises of the, let's check, it has the token type, the access token and the refresh token. And that is what it's going to receive from the API as a response. So in the response, we have the access token and all the, all the stuff in here. Okay, we have it here. Now we are checking if the access token is null, then return. But here it, is, it won't be null because user has registered. But for, let's have to check that for a good practice. And here, that's what you're going. So after we've retrieved the access token, we want to, we have created or injected the HTTP client here. So this is what you're doing. You're going to pass the access token to the header of this HTTP client instance that you have injected. And that's a way to set it. So we see we have the bearer token and now we want to set the token, the resource.access token. Take note, I'm not using the refresh token. We need to use the access token. And that is what we set over here. Now, in order to get the user email, this access token doesn't come with the user email. So we have to call this endpoint info to get the user email. Okay. So we call this and I also check if it is not success, we return. But in case it's successful, then we can now create this user details over here. Then we can read from the, we read from the response. So content dot read from JSON async. And now with this, maybe this is coming from the user details, right? So we have to create a user details class. We forgot to do that. Let's quickly create that model. This user details has to come in with um, email and is com email confirmed. If you want to know where these properties are coming from, let's, let me just comment this. Now let's run this application. And now let's check the Swagger endpoint and I'll see the, the resource. So based on the output, we also formulate our input here. So let's navigate to the Swagger endpoint. So slash Swagger. And now let's log in here and see. We have registered already. So try this out. Now let's log in. So it's admin at Gmail. And now the password here is admin at one, two, three. Okay, so let's log in. No, this is wrong. It's admin. Okay, so. And this is also wrong. Okay, so we have our token. Now let's grab this token here. Let's copy this. Now you can see we have an API endpoint here known as manage info. If I click on try this out, it needs a token to verify. You can see we have 401. So let's authenticate this, authorize this. And I type here, it is bearer. And I'll give space and I'll paste the token in here. Click on authorize. Then let's close it. Now let's go in at the end and I'll try to call this method and see what we have. So when executed, you see we have email and it's confirmed email. So it is going to come in an app as an adjacent format. So we need to also retrieve it. So we must have the same property like this to retrieve it. And that's the reason why we are creating this user details class. We create the user details class here. So let's close this. And in the solution, the same shared, or we can put it in here, anywhere that we can put that. But since this only the, the app going to use it, you can also put it inside this authentication folder. So I'll click on class. And now in here, user details, let's add that. 
and this is going to contain only two properties as you know and that's going to be the email and is email confirmed although we are not going to use this for now but let's retrieve it for sick and let's use the email string here okay so when you go back to the login um component now control k u and comment it so you can see from here that we want to retrieve because the output of this route is going to return just an email and under is email confirmed as a boolean expression so let's include this and now after we retrieve that we create an instance of this authentication model and you know this model comprises of the token the reference token and the bearer token type so we set them over here as you can see we are populating them so we can do something like this to make it short okay so we are populating it as you can see from here now after doing that we are calling this update method in the custom authentication state provider then we pass in the data that we've collected over here we pass in as soon as this gets to that um section it's going to set it as a claim to the header it's going to set as a claim then after doing all the stuff it's going to notify the authentication, authentication state change so this app can just get rendered right they're going to have the app in the authentication state mode okay after that we are navigating to this login page this is a home page right so maybe you can decide to remove this we navigate to this and here we need not to even force reload because the method that we invoked at the custom or state is going to reload render the app so you need not to reload the app is going to work okay now that's for the login now let's see let's try this login and see so let's run this and before we do that maybe we can have access to let's go to this to have the login section um let's go to the layout and because we have this main layout so within that main layout i want us to use this authorized features over here so let me just grab this from here and now where we have this let's remove this we want to display authorized route view in case you're authorized then we want to display um this if you're not then you want to display this so you can see that if you're authorized you want to display this your name and under logout button if you are not then display this but as soon as you click on logout then you want to call the update method in the custom or state and now specify now into this update authentication state method so here let's inject the reference and our nav manager too we have to include this navigation manager as well so here let's inject the navigation manager and add the authentication state provider okay so this is set let's save this and now let's run the application The app is ready but we are having an error here and i think i know the problem we have to include cascading parameter on top of the app.razor so in here let's go to this app.razor now here you have to specify this cascading um, parameter here so cascading you need to include this then we can we can just remove all these and now add it as a namespace then cut this the outer layer and i'll close it over here now let's save this and i think let's re-render okay so the app is ready now let's let's check it out so you see we have this login you have this register for now we haven't created the register yet we have only the login so click on the login because we have our form let's specify the email that we use so admin at gmail.com and now let's password is admin at one two three i hope you remember that click on login and now let's see so as soon as we are logging in it's going to call the method known as the update authentication state and you can see it has been updated now you can see we have it set over here if i click on log out it's going to remove it and you can see we have this log out okay now let's have a look let's try to customize this using this authorized view to see if, if i click on login 
and I log in, I'm going to see some features in and click how to. I'm going to see some features as well. But for now, if I click on weather forecast, you can see I'm able to have this weather forecast. Why? Let's right click on this, go to inspect element. And now let's check the header. So click on home, go to console network tab. Now let's click on weather forecast. We have the endpoint called. So you can see from here that it is it is calling this a file. But when you check the header, you can see the header has been, you have the authorization header set right here. So this is what you're going to do next. Let's go to the solution. Now you are going to move this from the API. So this is an API. You're going to close this. And now you can see we in the API, we have our uh, weather forecast class here. We want to move this weather forecast class to the shared folder, that's the models, because it's going to be used by both the client and the server. So from this, let's change this to demo. So this is a demo, the name of the file it is demo. Let's, let's grab the name well from any of the class here. So we have this is a demo and dot it is coming from the shared library. Okay, then it's coming from models folder. So we see from here that we have from the shared library, this is a shared one, and we have models. Okay, so this is the namespace. Then let's go to the this one. The weather forecast class in the API, we can just delete that. Let's go to the same one in the client section. That's the app. And let's go to the weather forecast. That's a weather.razor. You can see here we are making a call. But the call it is not going to, it is going to a static file. And this is the method. So we want to remove this because we have the same class in the shared folder. So here, control period, we can now use from the, the reference from the shared project. Now with this, how can we get a route? Let's go to the solution. And in a controller, you see we have open, because we have weather forecast controller. That is the name, weather forecast. So let's copy this name. And maybe we can even add an API forward slash to this controller name. Then in here, Control period, let's also include the model from the shed. Let's go to this weather.razor. And now in here, let's remove everything. Paste this. And now it is started from an API for a slash weather forecast. Okay. Now let's see what we're going to do next. So when we click on login, we are setting this authentication header. Let's see what we have this. Let's close this and open it again. So login.page.razor. Okay, so let's have the, let's look at the reason why we have this error here. All right, so let's see, um, let's remove this. And now from this class, control period, we can include the models. And now when you go to this weather forecast, it's supposed to be share.models, not the project name. All right, so we have this set. And now, uh, so once you have this already, you can see that when we check this, we are adding the token to the authentication header here. So this is what you're going to do next. Let's say after we log in, right, this is going to log in. We populate this and now send it to this method but we are not setting a, a authentication header. So let's comment this, let's see if, now let's run it and see. As soon as we click on the button, we're gonna have 401, not allowed, because that method, the weather forecast, needs to be authenticated before you can have access to that. But before we do that, when you come back to, so let's remove this. 
let's remove this from the namespace and it's supposed to be the dot models let's let me remove everything here and our control period let's include the new namespace and from the api this so let's set this as authorized let's protect this so passing this authorized attribute that's all now let's run this application okay so we are in now now i am not logged in so if i click on um weather forecast you can see we have this error if i right click and then go to inspect element you're gonna have 401 meaning not authorized so let's check from the console and we see it is saying something ducked 401 not authorized maybe let's reload this page now let's log in so you can see that we are not able to log in here because we are calling a method and our application depends on that method to get the claim so when we check this you can see that here we need to call this method here and on this method it is protected so we need to have a header right and that is what is not working so as soon as you have the header here, we're going to have access to this info. Then we can now have access to the claim and the username. And we can now authenticate the user properly. Now let's see. So let's refresh this again and see what I'm talking about. All right. So this open. Now let's log in. So we'll specify the credentials. Click on login. And now let's wait for the login to be done. After doing this, then we are going to... Um, call this API. So right click on this, go to inspect element, and let's click on network tab. So click on this plus sign, go to not this arrow sign, go to network. And I can see from here, so if I click on weather forecast, see what happens. Because now I have the data, click on this endpoint, and I can see we have this author the token set over here for the authorization. We have a set because when you check the login. As soon as we retrieve the token, we are setting it to the header of this HTTP client. Okay, so now we have this set and done. Let's go to yes, the nav menu. That is that's gonna be the layout. And in the nav menu, I want us to just add the authorized view property over there so we can see if the page gets reloaded or re-rendered and display some content and hide others. So let's go to this uh, nav menu. Now from here, maybe let's copy this. Let's paste this one. So we see here we are using this authorized attribute. And if you're authorized, you want to see this counter. That is when you're not authorized. But if you're authorized, then see this weather forecast. Because this weather forecast, you need to be authorized before you can see that. Let's remove this. And now let's save this. Then let's see so let's rebuild this application all right so you can see that as soon as we are logging we can see this weather forecast and i click on this and let's see although we are logging here well let's check it out okay so you can see we're not having this debra token here so let's log out let's log in reload this let's let's log in and now let's call this weather forecast now you see we have it now you see when we check the network tab weather forecast we have the token over here okay so everything is working and we're able to consume it the last section here or the portion it is a logout no that is a the register so register is very simple we have to create this register component we go to solution and the same pages we can just paste a register here and it's the same thing you know register registration has to do with the email address 
and now the password, isn't it? So handle register, we call our register model and we have to include our authentication state provider reference and we have a navigation manager also on top injected. Okay, now when we count down here, there's a register user. So let's include the, the reference or the namespace to this model. Control period. And now when this button is clicked, we push it to this endpoint. And now if it is access, we return to the login. But if it is not, then display this error okay. Okay, so let's see this. Let's reload this page. Now let's click on logouts and let's click on register. So we are on the register page. Oh, so you can see we have please login. We can change that quick and please register. Very simple. Okay. We can save that and I think for hot reload, we have to get it refreshed. Maybe we can leave it like that. So that's for the register. Yeah, it is here. Now let's put another, um, so let's say user at gmail.com now in the past because we have user at 123 so click on so maybe you can uh, include a mechanism to check password confirmation and etc right but this is just a registration so this is what the api needs to get the account registered so that's what we are doing okay so let's see if this button is going to be registered the api is going to be called Yeah, so you can see we have it set and it is called. Now this is a login. So let's try to log in and see. So log in this. And let's say if we're going to have this user at gmail.com that we use. Yes, yeah, so we are in. You can see we have this radar. If I click on weather forecast, you can see we have the data in here. But this data or this token has an expiry date. And um, when it expires, you need to call for a refresh token. I'm not going to implement this. This video is, is that at least it's okay for now because we spent yeah some time and we want to maintain uh stop here and maybe if you want me to add the refresh token to you, let me know and i'll do a separate video as they stop up to add the refresh token all right so um i learned that's it thank you so much for watching this video i believe you guys are okay with it and uh, we've covered uh, all the objectives isn't it you're able to configure the uh, web assembly costed um, project we will to also configure the default authentication endpoint and we've consumed the endpoint in our blazer application yes yeah, so thank you and i'm going to catch you up in the next video